Vault encrypts data by leveraging a few key sources. The first is the libraries that Vault uses, or the cryptography modules specifically that Vault uses to encrypt that data. And that is Golang's crypto and xcrypto libraries that are part of the Golang language. This is very important and is part of our open source story because we at HashiCorp abide by something called Kirchhoff's Principle. And Kirchhoff's Principle is a principle that comes from a 19th century uh, military cryptologist um, who stated that Basically, there is no security in obscurity. If you have a very secure system, that it, everything that talks about how that system protects itself should be visible. We translate that into modern times to mean that the source code for how you encrypt and decrypt data should be open source. And that's why HashiCorp's uh, Vault's source code for how it, Vault handles encryption is all composed in its open source binary. You can go on GitHub and take a look at it now, for example. Um, so we leverage those Golang crypto and X crypto libraries to handle the like the heavy lifting associated with um, encrypting and decrypting data. Those are the like those libraries contain the methods and functions that are the you know implementations of various algorithms like AES two fifty six um, that are used within Vault for either internally encrypting data and decrypting data or for as part of our transit backend, allowing you to leverage cryptography without having to deploy your own cryptographic infrastructure. Um, now, there's also this element of key management. How does Vault um, manage keys that are associated with these cryptographic functions? Vault handles this all through its own internal key ring, um, which is, again, also an open source, and allows Vault to not have to require a user to integrate in something like an HSM unless they want to. Um, Beyond this, when we talk about encryption, there are two th key things that we need to kind of focus on. The first is entropy, and the second is um, uh, basically uh, the, the linkages of how that encryption algorithm links to other cryptographic standards uh, or follows cryptographic standards. When we talk about entropy with Vault, um, you know, the entropy of Vault's encryption varies depending upon what system Vault is being run on. So with Golang's crypto and xcrypto libraries, they use a randomized function that calls different entropy pools depending upon which operating system you're deploying that on. For example, Windows uses a different type of like entropy pool than the entropy pool used by Linux. So one question that um, you need to really ask yourself is what, does, uh, what is sufficient entropy? for Vault. In many ways, um, those random number generators are sufficiently random. However, especially with Vault Enterprise customers, there are times where um, we run into questions about, you know, is that entropy sufficiently random? Is the method that's used to randomly derive those, um, the, the numbers used for either salts or otherwise numbers used only once or nonces um, to protect certain cryptographic components that are protected by Vault, sufficiently random for my threat model? And if it's not, this is where a Vault Enterprise feature called seal wrap comes into play. And seal wrap allows us to leverage external cryptographic modules, such as those that are contained within your HSM, to protect and wrap the cryptographic infrastructure of Vault in such a way that we can allow Vault to um, operate within very rigorous cryptographic environments in a way that doesn't violate their story around entropy, their story around key rotation, key management, et cetera. For example, um, the US standard of FIPS 140-2 um, has different levels um, that you know, refer to how secure an implementation of cryptography is. Well, with CRAP, Vault can allow um, uh, its data that's being used and stored within um, cryptographic reservoirs within Vault. So its key ring, the methods that it uses to encrypt data, et cetera, all that can be wrapped with another layer of cryptography that comes from a separate, very secure source, such as a, an HSM. And in that kind of model, those HSMs can be configured to run at a very high level of a FIPS level, thus allowing Vault to non-disruptively operate in FIPS 140-2 and uh, level 1, 2, and 3 environments.